This video will talk about brainstorming. So the first step of any research project is to pick a topic. And most of the time you'll have to decide what topic you want to pick. Brainstorming is a good way to do this because it allows you to list out a bunch of ideas and then you have a variety to pick from. So let's talk about some practical tips for brainstorming. So brainstorming is a divergent thinking activity. You want to get as many ideas as possible so that you can determine from those ideas which one is going to work the best for you. So the number one tip is that you should avoid criticism. The point of brainstorming is to have as many ideas as possible. That means you don't want to start knocking things off your list before you've given them full consideration. Along with this, encourage wild ideas. In my experience, sometimes my best and most creative ideas started off as jokes, things that seem to have absolutely no potential other than humor. Then when I stopped to think about them more, I realized with some minor adjustments or sometimes major adjustments, I could make them work. Proper brainstorming takes time, so you shouldn't think that you're going to come up with a topic in the first five minutes. Allow yourself some time to do this, and if you spread it out over time, you can get your brain to work on the problem of coming up with ideas and figuring out how they work when you're actually doing other things like eating lunch or going for a walk. But this only works if you have gotten your brain started on that process. When you're brainstorming, particularly when you're doing it over time, you can seek inspiration through friends, through other people's scholarship, on social media and in popular magazines, as well as textbooks, to start giving you ideas of things that fit the professor's requirements for topics and that also interest you enough to spend a significant amount of time over the semester doing that research. Don't forget that when you are doing research, you are building on the ideas of others. So as you start to have a lot of ideas, you may want to engage in some pre-search, which is looking at the databases you'll be required to use and see what kind of information is out there. Also, you may want to talk with other students in your class, and some of the things that they're thinking about may provide you with more inspiration in your brainstorming process. So the next tip is to be visual. I suggest using mind maps for brainstorming topics. You can start in the middle with your main topic. This may be the name of the assignment, the name of the broad topic you're supposed to research, or the name of the course. And from there, start to think of different topics that you could possibly research. At the first level, you can put some of the big ideas. And then from those big ideas, if they are too broad to research effectively, given your assignment constraints, you can start to focus that topic more. So one of the advantages of mind maps is to start in the middle and you can go out in all directions. When you brainstorm by listing topics on a sheet of paper, you can only go in one direction, one topic after another. But by starting in the middle, you can go in a lot of directions and you can explore relationships through the use of space. I highly recommend using color as well, which is different than just using pencil and paper to list topics. The advantage of color is, it, is you can make that color have meaning, such as using arrows for main relationships or big relationships, making those a different color than for smaller relationships, using color to go back and circle the ideas that you like the best or simply using color to get you to think differently. Images can also be useful in mind mapping, so you can use them to make visual metaphors or to emphasize something. The visual metaphor in this example is the brainstorm. So you see the brain turned into a rain cloud with thunderbolts coming out of it. And that's a different way to think about what brainstorming is. I like this visual metaphor because a thunderstorm is a very active activity. There's a lot of churning and rain and lightning and sound. So there's a lot happening at a given time. And that is a good metaphor for what brainstorming is because you are trying to get your brain to be really active as you come up with topic ideas. When talking about images for mind mapping, it is important to point out that some images can be useful and some can be distracting. If the images are solely decorative, then it takes your brain away from the creative constructive process of brainstorming to focus on the image, and that is not useful. However, if those images are meaningful, they are encouraging your brain to work differently. And finally, take advantage of brainstorming tools. Your brainstorming may happen with old-fashioned tools such as a pen and paper, 
But you can also use online tools. I have been using MindMeister, which is at mindmeister.com, and it's a free program. You can simply set up a free account, start in the middle with the class title or assignment name, and start branching out from there. It allows you some simple tools to highlight with different colors and can then be shared with classmates or professors as needed. So these are some basic tips on effective brainstorming. And you will notice that the purpose of these tips is to get a number of choices. So once you have a lot to select from, you may be able to easily weigh which one is going to work best for you, or you may need some help talking with classmates and your professor. Thank you for watching this video.